Sometimes after a long day of work, you just want to go back and relax. But since the roads are so empty, you might as well want something fast and exciting to drive. But you can't also have something utterly obnoxious like a second-hand sports car. You need something chilled and relaxed as well. And the current crop of German sedans, they're very common and two out of three of them are super boring to drive. Sometimes it's good to be back. This is the Jaguar XC. The XC is quite literally one of the most underrated vehicles in its class. It is by far the best driving and in fact one of the most exciting cars to drive with only the BMW G20 330i giving it some sort of trouble. The British pioneer in chassis development and this truly shows up in the Jaguar XC. The way it goes down the road, the way it handles the undulations of the road is truly cat-like. The reflexes that the vehicle has is truly electric. There's so much grip in the car, but if you want, this kitty will for sure play with you. This is the new Ingenium series of engines and it's truly a shame that Jaguar never got the V6 engines into India. In fact, they've stopped global production of it. This is a 2-litre turbocharged 4-cylinder now and in fact, the amount of technology and development that Jaguar have put into this engine is truly remarkable. And in fact, this motor is as fast or even faster than the old V6. Paired to this new engine is a ZF 8-speed gearbox and this gearbox is completely fine when you're just poodling around town here and there. Uh, the gear changes are unnoticeable and it is pretty smooth. But the problem really arises when you step on the car. The gearbox is just confused all of the time on which gear to choose and how much power which. So it's just a big, big confusion. This of course improves a little bit when you're in dynamic mode. but. There is one really great solution to this problem. These paddles, they're just the single most best thing in the car. I mean, just look at the quality. Completely made out of metal. This type of quality can only be seen in like high-end sports cars and supercars like Lamborghinis and Ferraris. I've been in an Audi R8 and even the paddles in that car were plasticky and cheap. Whereas in this, they feel absolutely amazing. When you're in the higher rev range and you're in dynamic mode, the paddles are very responsive in fact. The upshifts are super crisp and I don't know if that is pumped in audio noise or that's actual exhaust noise but you have these small little farts on upshifts which is very nice to listen to. Noise really isn't the forte of this motor. In dynamic mode you have this weird pumped in audio of the engine and weirdly it sounds like a V8 wink wink project 8 but that isn't the most impressive thing about this vehicle the most impressive thing is how it gathers speed click down the paddles a few times get into the boost range of the turbo two 
245 horsepower and 365 newton meters of torque shoots you off into the distance. That's more than enough than anything you need. And it is impressive of how Jaguar have calibrated this engine. It's a little two liter engine at the end of the day. And the amount of horsepower and the amount of push that it has, the amount of thrust it has, it is very impressive. But being fast and exciting is one thing and being luxurious and impressive is another. When you take your business clients out for lunch, instead of seeing the same old German interiors that they have seen a million times, they should be in awe of the interior. And this is what the XE's interior does to you. It makes you feel special. It keeps the people inside it in awe at all times. Each and every metal surface that Jaguar have done to this car is either knurled or smoothened out. For example, these AC controls over here, the knobs on them are knurled and these paddles and these steering controls are smoothened out. You cannot find a single cheap plastic spot in this car. They've gone as far as to keep the door cars even soft touch material. You get a big 10 inch infotainment system over here and you get a nice digital instrument cluster in front of you. There are a few drawbacks to them, they are quite laggy at times and the single most irritating thing about this whole infotainment system is of course these volume controls. It takes ages for it to understand if I'm doing a volume up or if I'm getting the volume down and that is the single most irritating thing in this car. But of course you get more features around, you get a wireless charging pad over here and you of course get driving modes, you have economy, you have comfort, you have dynamic and you have rain, ice and snow. That is very helpful from time to time. And also if you're in cold or slippery regions of some sort, you have a low traction launch control system as well. Because this car is rear wheel drive, it sometimes takes a little bit more effort to get it off the line in tricky situations. So that is also a very helpful feature. Jaguar have also given 360 degree cameras and sensors around the car. So you can perfectly fit this car into tight and small spaces. In fact, it also gets an automatic parking feature, which we didn't get the time to try, but apparently it also works very beautifully. The attention to detail that Jaguar have done to this interior is absolutely stunning. Just look at the steering wheel. It is by far the cleanest looking steering wheel you will ever get in this segment. And the seats are also very nice and made out of pure leather. But all in all, these small little drawbacks here and there can always be forgiven because it's a jag at the end of the day. And this interior is just awesome. As the night sky went from a jet black to an inky blue, I started to appreciate the Jaguar's stunning design. Ian Callum has to be one of the greats when it comes to design. The car is perfectly proportioned and the long hood and short rear overhangs give it a more sports car look rather than a luxurious sedan. The DRLs give it that mean and angry front end and the rear is clean and mature with two simple exhaust tips. Look at it from the side angle, you will understand how low the car is and no other German rival has this much of passion and designing excellence poured into it. As the sun rised and the mountains gave way to light, I stopped the car to get out and appreciate the scenery. The Jaguar was perfectly parked in the rising sun with nature around it and this was the Jaguar's natural habitat. This car, even though with its luxurious interior and state-of-the-art tech, it's meant to be used wherever it goes. All night it was an epic sports sedan and in the rising sun, it was a piece of art. This truly is a car for the driving enthusiast. After driving the XE all night, I've come to the conclusion that it is the perfect blend of British luxury and performance. It might not be the sharpest thing when it comes to driving and might not also be the best thing when it comes to intuitive interiors, but it surely looks stunning and the interior is just a class apart. German cars are just too serious, but this thing, it has the flair, it has that passion behind it and it is of course brilliant because it's British engineering. Well, it's almost 7am time to get back to work.